It's about grace. Another dimension is shalom. I, uh, I've been thinking a little bit about that, you know, grace. So grace for us really means, in a practical way, generosity. To be gifting. Uh, to be gifting something. So it's generosity. And uh, maybe it's a better word than grace. I don't know. Maybe it explains things a little bit better in our, our era. I'm reminded of a professor of mine, uh, Sister Annalise Sennett, who always said, do everything possible to not use church words. Always. Scratch them out. Talk straight. Talk normal. Don't talk in code. I don't know if grace is a code word or not. We can maybe talk a little bit more about that another time. There are all kinds of forms of grace, but for us this morning, within the context of Shalom, it, it, it proposes, it starts with the understanding that God gives favor to all people. Even those we think uh, seem unworthy, God gives generously to us all. And that's a good place to start, that God is generous for all people. Now, there's a force within the idea of grace or generosity that uh, it is not something that is ever earned. It's not a conditional thing. It, 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 it's, if, it, if it's conditional, it's not, it's not a gift. It's not a grace. It's something else. Uh, and we understand when we think about our faith, this idea of generosity or grace is actualized by our faith. Okay? By faith, we have, uh, by grace, we have been saved through faith in Jesus Christ. By grace, we have been saved by faith. By God's generosity, we have been saved through faith in Jesus. And when we get to that point and we understand that, all of the shalom starts to become more clear. Saved by faith. We're saved from what? What are we saved from? In part, in part, I tell you the truth, what we've been saved from is a life filled with greed, hatred, judgmentalism. Uh, we've been saved from that, and we have a chance to actualize God's kingdom here on earth. We fulfill the Lord's prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, says Jesus, on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we're working for. That's what we're working for. Here at St. John, one of the ways we demonstrate God's generosity is through the table, the open table that said, when we give communion, we say, all people are welcomed at that table. That the table, the, the, the meal, is a gift from God. It's not something we earn. It's not... Uh, some sort of a right or privilege. We, we choose not to bureaucratize that. We say this is freely given, and if you care to have this gift, please come. It's available to all of us. All of us, no matter who we are. In faith, we begin to understand that we are not alone, that in fact we do live in God's world, and God's abundance continues to flow in our lives. And as we sense that and we understand that, we experience a type of well-being that is unique to anything else we can experience in this world. Today, Jesus tries to explain what the kingdom of heaven is like through a story. The kingdom of heaven, not only up there, but down here. This is what it's like. He says there was a landowner who had a lot of work to do. Uh, he established the day's wage, which back in those days was a denarii or a denarius. It was the equivalent of you worked for a denarius. It would be enough money to feed a family for three or four days. So it, it's, you know... It's a proposition that's not insignificant, particularly when you understand that the story Jesus is weaving 
the people understand that the people who are working are the poor. These are the poor, the poorest of the poor. And uh, so, in any event, the story begins where uh, workers come in earlier in the day and they start working and then a few hours later, a few hours later, a few hours later, and then finally the men and women are coming home, they receive their pay, the pay is the same. It feels like if the, the first part of this is kind of a quid pro quo and it moves into various dimensions of generosity by the time we get to the end. Um, and it feels like the people who are first to receive their money are receiving almost a, a gift, if you will. The, the tricky thing about this, and this is why um, God, throughout Scripture, I, you go right for every book, is overwhelmingly and profoundly irritated with human judgmentalism. It's the greatest sin. It's, you can, you can feel it. And we don't know, and Jesus won't tell us the stories of the people in this story. We really don't know why some came early. We don't know why some came later. We have no idea of really what's going on. We see a transaction that he says, this is the kingdom of God. All people are equal. But the fact of the matter is, uh, yes and no. People, many people have much less capacity for any number of reasons much less capacity. We're all sacred. We're all gifted. But God is hoping that we all come together. Jesus said in uh, Luke, he said, uh, to whom much is given, much is expected. To whom much is given, much, much, much is expected. In God's economy, this is where it's at. And so this is what the kingdom of God looks like on earth as it is in heaven. Now, this aspect of shalom is exceedingly difficult for many, particularly if one understands that everything in life must be earned. And there's the lack of awareness that everything in life is filled with the nuance of grace, even if we don't see it. But if we imagine it, we can start to see it better. Or that people think that they have earned everything they own. It's mine. I worked for it. I deserve it. It's mine. We're taught that. It's not a goofy thought, because it's certainly within the realm of our social structure that this type of thinking exists. It's within our own sense of identity and purpose that we get to unpack that against the idea of generosity and grace. It's a challenging piece. But in the end, we're always told through faith that we cannot serve God and man. We make a choice. The choice is ours. Which way do we want to go? You see, the fruit of this thinking, that it's mine, I earned it, I own it, the fruit that comes always out of that line of thinking is judgmentalism. 
I earned it, you didn't. You didn't do enough to get what you need. That's your, that's on you. Judgmentalism. So we have to, in our spiritual walk, fight this type of stuff. You know, you know and I, I guess the other thing is, not only does this disturb the spiritual integrity of us when we get caught up, it actually disturbs an understanding of the socioeconomic reality of life. There's grace in all kinds of stuff. It's part of the way the world works. We've all been graced. We've all been gifted. We've all been given all kinds of different chances and opportunities that we have not truly earned. Sometimes we have to Think about it. I've told this story before, but I just love it. Uh, uh, World War II uh, veterans who owned rather big com companies who were alums of the University of Detroit. I, I got an opportunity in the 80s, 1980s, to have dinner with a group of these guys every few months. And, and they were really interesting. I mean, they were strong Catholic guys. They were all members of the Cardinals Club and all that sort of stuff. Went to Mass every day, worked hard. And, and the guys all said, and they all, well, they fought in World War II, you know, whatever. And, uh, but the guys, they said, you know, we are so privileged to have to pay high taxes. They saw that as a badge of honor. They didn't think of it as anything but a bad. I mean, they were at a war. They had seen everything in the world. And the guys would say, you know, and here's the thing, folks. They'd say, there's no way we could do our businesses without the overwhelming infrastructure of the United States. If we really try to quantify this, we are graced upon, graced upon, graced to be able to do what we do. I was inspired by those guys. You see, we need to attempt to grasp the idea that God does own everything, making everything sacred. God wants us to be generous, generous, as he is generous. He wants us to be yoked to Jesus every moment of the day to help us into this new space of thinking. He realizes it's not easy. He does not want anyone to be victimized by anything less than doing God's will. You see, it's not easy, but we have that opportunity to do it by being yoked to Jesus. And we focus on grace. So how do we practice grace here at St. John? What are the fundamentals of grace that we try to unpack? And every aspect of grace is, in fact, a, an opportunity for personal spiritual growth. There's a reason for everything we do to help us become filled with God's love. The first thing is financial giving. That's, you, you can prioritize it as one or two or three, but it's, it's big, it's very important. And, and the giving the financial support that's essential is missional support, unrestricted giving. I give to the church. I give to the people of God. I give because I want my friends to have an opportunity to grow. I give because I think about those who have not got here yet. I give because I am grateful for the people of St. John, how I've been helped over time, how the people here have made me whole. It's an important dimension of grace. I 
I give through focused volunteer support. I don't even know if I need that. Do I need it? Oh, I do. As I get older, I have to have more notes. They're saying, God, I wish you'd get rid of some of these notes. Anyway, um, focused volunteer support. Huge, huge gifting. I, I look at the things that we're doing in the church. I look at the effort that is made every week to do worship. I look at the choir. I look at the greeters. I look at the ushers, the communion assistants, the worship assistants, the people who get the uh, our, our, our coffee hour started. All the different people who are trying to make this experience a, a good experience that helps us all grow in our faith, that sets the stage for the missional work the church must do. Must do. This is preparation for that. I think about the people who work on Pathways and Compassion and go to that nursing home and meet with people who have nothing. I think of the people who have been working on the house the residents, we're calling it for now until we have a, probably a better name, but right now it's the residents who have gotten that home just about ready to support individuals with disabilities. Lots of volunteers, lots of hours, lots of blood, sweat, and tears. I think about the tutoring program that we now have and the fact that people are now calling every day asking for help, and all of the volunteers that are supporting that. You see, we are a community that is in the midst of this. We are a community of folks who are taking those next steps in Shalom. For some of it, us, it's a little more of a struggle than for others. Each one of us are uniquely gifted and challenged. But here's the thing, folks. If we continue to build a community and embrace God's love for each of us, we all will become stronger more committed and more capable to be the hands and feet of God. Amen.